Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Lord, we honor you this morning, God, for this wonderful opportunity, Father. God, prepare the hearts of your people, Lord God, to receive your word in Jesus' name. We thank you for revelation. We thank you for confirmation. And we thank you for the victory in Jesus' name. Amen. Proverbs chapter 18, verse 20. A man's belly shall be satisfied with the fruit of his mouth. And with the increase of his lips shall he be filled. Verse 21 says, death and life are in the power of the tongue. Let me just pause there. I see something I didn't see this morning. We control what we say. We, we are controlled by what we say. You can control death and you can control life. God has given you that authority with your kingdom language having self. Amen? He says, death and life are in the power of the tongue. We're in control. And, that, and they that love it shall eat the fruit thereof. Now move over to Romans chapter 4. Turn over there. Chapter 4, verse 17. We want to read that scripture as well. Romans chapter 4, verse 17. The Bible says, as it is written, I have made thee a father of many nations. Before him whom he believed, even God, who quickeneth the dead, and watch this, and called those things which be not as though they were. We have a kingdom language that God desires us to flow in, to walk in, to speak in. Amen? Now on my job, just to let you know, I, I'm an instructor on my job. On my job, I teach a class called Satori Alternatives to Managing Aggression. My task in this class is to teach staff how to handle people with behaviors when they get out of control, so to speak. Amen? And it's really a, a mental health facility, but the, the, the class can go beyond mental health doors. And so in that class, I make a statement. 90% of all aggression can be solved verbally. If we know how to talk, we can solve 90% of all aggression, not just mental health facility. This is across culture, across our society. 90% can be, can be uh, handled by what you say. Are y'all with me? I'm, I'm, we, we're going to warm up in a minute. Amen. I want to make sure that we get that point across because it's all about what you say. But here is my point this morning. Uh, the majority of our culture, society, when we communicate, we communicate through social media or with our iPads, our cell phones, emails. And you know on your job, they want to email you to life. Amen. And so you got all of these emails and then you got Instagram and Facebook and Twitter and you got all of these social media opportunities. And yes, in our leadership meeting yesterday, we talked about tweeting. The problem is not the social media. The problem is what we're saying with the social media. Because say you in the red is disrespectful. We don't know how to talk. And when we do talk, we don't know what to say. Amen. Amen. And now listen, this is my intent. I want to make sure we get this. I want to encourage every believer to speak life in every circumstance. For the word of God, it is the kingdom of heaven and it is life. Amen. Praise the Lord. So let me give you a revelation here. John chapter 11, verse 4. This is the story of Lazarus. Y'all remember Lazarus. This was Jesus' friend and he was dead. And the Bible says, uh, I'll pick it up here in verse 4. It says, uh, uh, when Jesus heard that this sickness is not unto death, he said this sickness is not unto death, but for the glory of God that the Son of God might be glorified thereby. Now, what we understand about this particular scripture is Jesus made a declaration. He said the sickness that I'm hearing about, it is not unto death. How can Jesus make such a statement? Because while he waited for more days, the Bible says that after that time, someone came to him and said, hey, Jesus is dead. You remember, it was Martha. Because when Jesus came to the city, the Bible says she called him right before he was getting ready to enter the city, and she had an attitude. 
She had an attitude because, Jesus, you if you had been here, my brother wouldn't have died. Well, you got to understand, Jesus was able to make that declaration based on the perception and or the location of where he's standing. See, he was standing in kingdom time. He was standing in a, a dominion called kingdom rule and reign. So he's able to make certain declarations. You're not going to die. You're going to live. How can you say that? Because I'm standing in kingdom. Let me give you an example. This monitor here represents the kingdom of heaven. This monitor here represents the kingdom of darkness. Amen? So here Jesus hears about Lazarus. He's standing. He's kingdom. Are y'all with me? He's kingdom. And he says here, he says, he says, uh, uh, Lazarus, this, he's not going to die. Is not unto death. Why? Because he's in kingdom of heaven. Kingdom of darkness, when you hear of an illness, oh my goodness, we're not going to make it. He's going to die. He can't make it. He's sick. Deception, lie, non-truth. Amen? So every time we make a statement, one of these kingdoms is affected. So you might be having a circumstance or a situation. Amen? And while you're walking through this situation, you find yourself doubting. Oh, that's kingdom of darkness. Oh, my goodness, I'm not going to be able to make it. I can't work through my problem. I can't work. That's kingdom of darkness. Oh, but when you get a word, when you get Jesus, now you can confess, oh, we are going to make it, and life is going to be wonderful. Why? Because of the perception of where you are. How many of you live in the kingdom of darkness? How many of you live in the kingdom of heaven? Yeah. You got to know your kingdom. Amen. Praise the Lord. Now, let me, let me, let me, let me work just a little bit with this because I want to make sure we understand the power of Jesus here. Jesus, the Bible says that he waited four days still when he heard about Lazarus. What's powerful about this scripture is when Martha approached him, Jesus said, uh, uh, show me where y'all laid him. Amen. Yeah, tell me where y'all tell me where y'all laid him because you got to remember Martha found herself between two kingdoms. When she showed up, she was standing in the kingdom of darkness, talking about if you'd have been here, he wouldn't have died. Amen. Glory to God. Jesus was cool. Why? Because he's standing in the kingdom of heaven. His mindset and his perception is not on death; it's on life. Why? Based on where he's standing. Glory to God. And so for all my married couples, it don't matter how bad it get; it matters where you stand. Because you can speak to your circumstances, tell the circumstance, I need you to change. Amen, somebody. God needs circumstances to change, but it takes us. Why? Because we got power of life and death. Where are they? In the tongue. And we've been talking and we talking and we talking and we talking, but we're not saying nothing. What's really unfortunate is when you don't have a relationship with God, and you find yourself speaking kingdom of darkness things, you're trying to speak a kingdom of darkness thing, or you're trying to speak a kingdom of heaven thing while standing in darkness. So let me explain what you're saying. You ain't prayed, you ain't been in the words, you haven't been with the Lord, you ain't spent no time in his throne room, and you stand over here and you want because you want to say a good thing. You sounds real, real churchy. All things are gonna work for my good, but you don't have a relationship with the Lord. You're just saying something that sounds wonderful. You can say all of the kingdom of heaven stuff that you want to say, but it's coming from the kingdom of darkness and nothing moves. Nothing changes on your behalf. Nothing manifests on your behalf. Why is that? Because we haven't spent any time with it. See, we have to travel to this place called the kingdom of heaven and spend time with him and worship him and bow down with him and tell him that he's everything that we need before we go and confess certain things. Y'all with me this morning? All right, we're going to go further. We're going to go further. There are some definitions I got to give you. This first word, I love this word, is called cognitive dissonance. Cognitive dissonance. And here is the definition. Cognitive dissonance is the mental discomfort or distress uh, experienced by a person who simultaneously holds two or more contradictory beliefs, ideas, or values. Watch this. When trying to perform an action that contradicts one of those beliefs, ideas, and values. It's the same as standing over here talking about, I think Jesus can, glory to God, because you remember Martha, Jesus, kingdom of darkness, Jesus, if you had been here, my brother wouldn't have died. And then she switches and goes to the kingdom of heaven. But now that you're here, just say a word. 
So she switched from kingdom to kingdom, and we do it all the time. As a matter of fact, we do that with our angels. I'm confessing that I'm healing. Well, that's kingdom of heaven. So the enemy, I mean, so the Lord releases your blessing. When he releases your blessing, here come the angels carrying your blessing, and you're still sick in your body. So while time is passing and you're waiting on your miracle to show forth and manifest, here you come, you wind up on the kingdom of darkness, now back to doubt. Because manifestation hasn't happened yet. So what we do is we control, we confuse our angels. They don't know whether to bring the blessing or keep it. They don't know whether to bless us or keep the blessing. Oh, he's confessing healing. Here come the blessing. Here come the blessing. Yeah, I, I, you know, I, I, I've been waiting a long time. I don't know. Kingdom of darkness. Well, God got my blessing. Oh, okay. He got your blessing. It's on its way. It's on its way. Oh, uh, yeah, but it sure is taking a long time for the manifest back here. And so our angels are starting, and then they stop. And then they start with the, and then they have to stop. Because they don't know whether or not to bring your blessing. Because you're confused because you're bouncing from kingdom of heaven back to kingdom of darkness and all over again. Oh, Lord, help me preach. Amen. We are having a cognitive dissonance. We are confused. The Bible calls it being lukewarm. In Revelation chapter 3, God says, I need you to either be hot or cold. Right now, I'm choosing to spew you out of my mouth because you're lukewarm. Are you going to be saved? Or not saved. Now, which one are you going to do? Are you going to speak life? Or are you going to dabble with death? Which one are you going to do? Are you going to have faith? Or are you going to walk in doubt? Which one are you going to do? Well, Pastor Nero, you don't understand how. I understand. I'm, I'm human too. But God says, I need you to confess a thing and hold on to it. Because the manifestation is coming. We finna preach in here. Amen. Cognitive dissonance. I'm confused. I'm lukewarm. Watch this. I'm unstable in all of my ways. I can't even be blessed because I'm running through two opinions. And I'm confused. I'm having cognitive dissonance. Kingdom. Let's talk kingdom. Kingdom is a spiritual realm. It's a spiritual realm. It is a place. Listen. The kingdom of heaven, this place is powerful. The Lord gave me a song called Throne Room. And the reason for the song, it was pinned from the heavens to the heavens. God manifests when we say back to him who he is. That's how he manifests. Amen? And you cannot determine who he is if you've never been with him. There has to be a level of intimacy before you can confess kingdom of heaven things. There has to be a new level of intimacy. Are y'all hearing me, church? I want you to get this. You have to have a new level of intimacy so that God can begin to manifest based on what you say. Because you can't be in the kingdom of heaven talking about my back hurt. It don't work like that. Why? Because the kingdom of heaven can't respond to something that they don't know nothing about. The kingdom of heaven is not concerned about illness because there is no illness. It can only, con it can only respond to what it knows. Is this helping you? It can only respond to what it knows. The kingdom of heaven don't know nothing about illness. So God, doesn't, he, he can't hear the complaint because he don't know nothing about that. He can only manifest and move based on what he knows. And what is he familiar with? Healing. Sort of deliverance. He's familiar with righteousness and peace. He's not familiar with illness. Doubt sickness, fear. Why not? Because he hadn't given us a spirit of fear, but of love and of power and a sound mind. We're going back and forth. God says, make up your mind. Y'all looking at me, it's all right. I'm going to preach harder, so it's, it's, it's okay. Hey Amen. Glory to God. God says, I need you to make up your mind. Which one are you going to do? You going to be kingdom of heaven or kingdom of darkness? You going to speak life or you going to hang with death? You going to roll in faith or you going to operate in doubt? Which one are you going to do? Because God says, I'm only going to respond to one of them. And watch this. And the kingdom of darkness, the enemy, his imps and his demons and his witch, they're going to respond to the other. Amen, somebody. Glory to God. Y'all blessed? 
So kingdom is spiritual realm, authority of God, the territory, rude, and location. That's what Jesus was operating in when he heard about Lazarus. He was so far in the kingdom because it's who he, who he is, he was resting in the kingdom. So when he heard something negative, he couldn't respond to that. All he could say was, this sickness is not under death. Amen. Because I don't know death. Why? Because I'm the resurrection. Amen. I'm the resurrection. And so because I'm the resurrection, he's going to live again. And then watch Martha. Martha trips me out because now she's back to the kingdom of darkness. Well, I know he's going to rise again in the resurrection when, when it comes. Jesus said, no, 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 no. It's here right now. And so the manifestation that you're needing is here when? Right now. I'm sorry, cameraman. I gotta, I'm, it's, it's all in my toes. I can't help myself. Pray for me. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. So Martha is finding herself going back and forth, cognitive dissonance. She is confused. She's double-minded. Many people are double-minded in their Christian walk with God. You want to look like you're saved, but you don't know how to talk to your father. We got to be able to tell God, Lord, you're everything I need. But most of us don't want to surrender all of us because we were hurt in a horizontal relationship. God says, I need you to only focus on the vertical. I'll take care of the horizontal. We talk and talk and tweet and tweet and Instagram, text, all of this wonderful stuff. And ain't, ain't nothing but mess. And God says, and I can't even respond to none of that. All of that doubt. I can't move. I can't move. Angels, you be still. Glory to God. Because I know she want to be blessed, but she keeps flowing back and forth. Glory to God. By the time the angels pick up all of the blessing, because there's a whole lot of stuff waiting on us. By the time the, your angels picks up all your blessing, you don't switch back to the kingdom of darkness. And God said, wait. Don't jump. Don't move. Amen. We don't know how to talk. Praise the Lord. We don't know how to bless people. We be hating. We don't have time to hate. Praise the Lord. This is the time, listen, this is the time for unity in the house of the Lord. The Lord gave me, I'm going to way fly off. I'm going to jump back to the iPad in a minute. The Lord showed me this revelation. Our government understands the power of unity. So they do everything in their power to keep us divided. It's the same thing with our government, Romans chapter 13. It's also the same in the spirit realm. The enemy knows that if any of our Christian church ever get on one accord, the ushers working with the music ministry, the music ministry working with the armor bearers, the armor bearers, if we ever be one, there's going to be a glory released in here that we're going to really experience Second Chronicles chapter 5 where there won't be no preaching because oh, why? Because everybody's slain in the spirit. Why? Because of the glory that's filling this temple. And we want to experience that glory and we want to talk about it, but we don't want to do what it takes for that to manifest. Which is what? Change the way you talk. Are y'all with me so far? I got to move on. Language, 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 language. Language is defined as a method of human com uh, communication spoken consisting of the use of words. What kind of words are you using today? Amen. Because it's unfortunate, but we have a way we talk at home and a way we talk at the church. We got a way we talk when our song come on. Glory to God. Amen. We, even, we don't even know we're doing it. We don't even know. Because we got a kingdom of heaven with our radio. You got the kingdom of darkness. 97.5, the beat. And then you got heaven 96 it on heaven 97. Glory, that's kingdom and darkness. Back and forth. We even have our days where oh, today I'm going to be holy. I'm going to be spiritual, so we're going to worship the Lord. But if you catch you on a real good day, you're going to flip over here to this side. Amen. Glory to God. Listen, the same mouth that God gave you to bless him with, some every now and then, a cuss word come out that same mouth. Back and forth, back and forth. Oh, y'all make sure y'all tell Pastor McGill I'm not, I'm not meddling. I'm in the book. Amen. 
Y'all blessed? Every time you make a statement, two kingdoms are affected. Every statement that you make, two kingdoms are affected. You got the kingdom of heaven and the kingdom of darkness. Every time you say something, she bad. Talking about somebody's baby. She, that baby, they, she bad. You need to beat the butt. That baby is bad. You're speaking something over it. Therefore, you can never be surprised while you're speaking over your own child. You can never be surprised that when they grow up, they take you through this maze of misunderstanding based on something I spoke several years ago. Because let me help you. Your words, they have, they have the power of death and life. So what you say does manifest. I'm trying to help somebody. I'm preaching. I'm trying to help somebody. Because we are real loose with the way we talk. Real loose. Uh-huh. Look at her. Right there is the, 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 your, it's over. You haven't even said anything yet. But the content of your heart based on what's getting ready to flow out of your mouth that tells the Spirit of God what's in you and what kind of spirit is controlling you. Let me get back here. Two kingdoms are affected. Let me give you an example. The kingdom of darkness says, we ain't going to make it. I can't make it. I, don't, I can't do that. But the kingdom of heaven says, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. The kingdom of darkness says something like, like uh, I can't believe this trial I'm going through. But the kingdom of heaven says, count it all joy when you fall into divers' temptations. Glory to God. Why? Knowing this, that the work that this trial that's going on in your life is working something in you. What is it working? It's working some patience, some temperance. Glory to God. I teach a defensive driving class, and you know what? We used to always talk about speeding and texting and driving and drinking and driving. We have more people now that are distracted when they're driving. What does that mean? That means we can't stay focused. We're bouncing from here to here. Oh, one moment I'm going to not be, well, I'm going to be, no, well, I don't, uh, it depends on what day, but we're, we're all over the place. God says, I need you to speak kingdom of heaven. Amen? Kingdom of darkness says, I don't like him and I don't like her. The kingdom of heaven says, yeah, but you need everything in them to help you fulfill your purpose because according to Ephesians chapter 4 it talks about us being the body fitly joined together and so because you need that individual you don't have time to be tripping with them you need listen your neighbor sitting next to you you need their anointing you need their wisdom you need their strength even if it's your spouse amen I know that's your boo on the other side of that coin, they're also another child of God. And so you need their anointing to help you fulfill your purpose. Are y'all with me? This kingdom that I'm talking about makes us, makes us open to many attacks of the enemy. We have to be wise when we are talking. Praise the Lord, somebody. Because many people are just saying what they feel like saying when it's not being driven by the spirit of God or by the kingdom that you rest in amen are y'all with me so far y'all with me amen because this our conversation has to change we're gonna have to learn to speak life can y'all speak life in every circumstance praise the Lord hallelujah I'm gonna I'm gonna run here and we're done I want to talk about the importance of your kingdom of heaven language it is so very important. Are y'all with me? Praise the Lord. Your kingdom of heaven language will sustain you for the rest of your life. Praise the Lord. But we're going to have to dive into his word and have a wonderful diet of God's word every day. Paul said, I have to die daily. Why would he say such a thing? Number one, he knows himself. Amen. He know that he got a jacked up attitude on whatever day. He knew that hey, if you catch me on the wrong day, you might hear something you don't want to hear. That sound like anybody you know? Okay, not you, but somebody. Okay, all right. Amen. Yeah, yeah, Paul understood that. So he said, I'm going to have to lay myself down 
every day. Glory to God. Because I might say something that might be detrimental to my purpose. So I'm going to have to learn how to spend time in the presence of God, worshiping God, so that when I come out of the throne, I will be able to speak life in every circumstance and situation. Praise the Lord. Amen, amen, amen. The importance of your kingdom of heaven language. Let me give you to you. Number one, it gives you the authority to rebuke the enemy. Oh, Matthew chapter, Matthew chapter 4. Turn it with me. It gives you the authority to rebuke the enemy. The power of life and death are in your tongue. And the word of the Lord gives us the authority to rebuke the enemy. Amen? Glory to God. And let me help some of you out. Your enemy don't have a social security number or a driver's license number. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Many times we don't even know who the enemy is. All we know is we see darkness. Matthew chapter 4, verse 1. The Bible says, then was Jesus led up of the spirit into the what? Wilderness to be tempted of the devil. And when he had fasted 40 days and 40 nights, he was afterward hungry. And when the tempter came to him, he said, if thou be the son of God, command that these stones be made bread. The nerve of the enemy. What did Jesus do? He simply used the word. Amen. He used the word. He said, he answered and said, it is written, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word, where it coming from? That proceeded out of the what? The mouth of God. Do you see how powerful what you say means? And if you spend time in his presence, that means that you say what Jesus says. You say what the word says. And what is the word saying? You shall not live by, every, by, by that situation. Every word that proceeded out of your mouth, there is something powerful about what you say. I am going to get that promotion. I am going to get, I'm going to receive that. How do you know? Because I've been in his presence. So I don't know how to say anything else but what he says. What does that mean? That means back to uh, 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 Proverbs, it talks about I'm going to be satisfied and increased by what comes out of my mouth. Are y'all with me? Amen? So here the scripture, look, look at Jesus. I love Jesus. Jesus, thank you. He was first led by the spirit. Can y'all say he was first led by the spirit? Into the wilderness. You have to have the spirit when you go into the wilderness. The really, one of the reasons why people get destroyed in the wilderness is that they enter without the Holy Ghost. And many times, because we don't have the spirit of God, we don't know how to talk. Amen. Jesus knew how to talk. So no matter how tired he was, no matter how hungry he was, no matter how he felt in his natural person, in his kingdom mindset, he was able to say, I need you to understand that every word that proceeds out of my mouth, that's how I'm going to be victorious. No matter how he felt, he was able to declare something. How? Because of the Spirit of God. And where do you get that? In his presence. Look at the next thing he's, uh, uh, the next thing. Satan used, in verse 6, Satan used the word, but nothing happened. Satan used the word, but nothing happened. Well, Pastor, help me understand that. Oh, sure. Because here is the enemy who is in the kingdom of darkness, but he's saying a churchy thing. It sound real good because we go to church and we heard Pastor McGill say it. So I figured I'd say it too. But nothing manifests because there is no relationship. Oh, my God. Amen, somebody. We have to have relationship with God so that when we confess him to himself, he manifests. Oh, my Lord. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. The Lord Jesus shows us something in verse 7. He says, uh, the enemy comes to him again. And Jesus saith unto him in verse 7, it is written again, thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. The enemy comes to him yet another time. In verse 8, he says, and again, the devil taketh them into an exceeding high mountain and showeth him all the kingdoms of the world and the glory of them. 
and saith unto him, All these things will I give thee if thou wilt just fall down and worship me. Jesus said, You know what? I'm about tired of this. Let me ask, I got a question. Anybody tired? When the enemy keep on bringing you this negative kingdom of darkness mess your way, are you about tired? Anybody tired? Are you, are you tired? Well, if you're tired, you're going to have to rub back in your kingdom of heaven state and say, Satan, get behind me. You're going to have to make up your mind. But see, some of us ain't been through no trial yet. We ain't had... Yeah, yeah, yeah. You ain't been through nothing yet. You, 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 maybe you haven't been through. Maybe you haven't. No, I, don't, I don't know. I know your life's been cut off, but that ain't no trial. That's just a lack of discipline. That's not no trial. That's a lack of discipline. Why? Because you didn't discipline yourself to not spend what you wasn't supposed to spend and live before your means, and you would have been able to pay your bills. That's just a lack of discipline. That ain't no trial. A trial is when your lights come on and you don't have no job and then God moves by his spirit because of where you manifest yourself at. Then he turns your lights back on and you didn't have the money. Now you can come holler at me. Amen, somebody. Because all oh, of the devil done took my car. No, he didn't. You weren't disciplined to pay the note. Amen, somebody. Amen, church. I, I got to move on. Ooh, pastor going to get me. Jesus said, I'm tired, devil. Get behind me. Y'all must not have ever been tired. Glory to God. I'm tired of this darkness. God says, change your location. Glory to God. You're too busy standing. God says, you need to try another posture. You don't want to get your dress dirty where you wore the wrong one. It's supposed to be worship to God. As a matter of fact, when you really get in, I mean you really get in there, nobody else is here and you in a crowded room. Doesn't matter. I saw your sister Floyd. She laid prostrate before the Lord. Wasn't nobody else there but her and God. And we're all in the same room. Are y'all with me? We need to get tired. I guess that's what it is. Just get tired and tell the devil, get behind me. Amen. Number two. Woo! Number two. The importance of your kingdom of heaven language is it gives you the authority to speak to a dead thing and it comes to life. Oh, let me ask a question. Sister Kim, you're going to love this one. Anybody have some dreams? I had some dreams, and then in 2014 and 15 and 16, can I go there? I walked through hell. Amen. The enemy almost took me out. Oh, no, y'all not. The enemy almost took me out. I ain't going to cry, Lord. I ain't going to cry. The enemy almost took me out. Say, you're not going to preach again. You won't worship anymore. You won't record anymore. Amen. Until I got me a word. So the enemy had rehearsed it so long with me, I found myself in the kingdom of darkness. And all of a sudden, I hear a word that says, shame off you. That was mine. I don't know what yours is, but that was mine. So when I got that word, my whole perspective changed, and now my ministry is national and international. Amen. And it don't matter what nobody else thinks. Why? Because I can't hear you. I'm in the kingdom of heaven. That's why you can never be offended because you're in the kingdom. I didn't even understand they felt that way. I never heard them. Why? Because I'm in the kingdom. Ah, Jesus. I'm in the kingdom. I can't hear your negative thoughts. I don't live where you live. I'm in the kingdom. I'm in the kingdom. Maybe that's what some of you need. You need to spend some time in his presence so you can't hear the negative thoughts. The, let me tell you something. The kingdom will allow you to read a negative, a negative Facebook post. 
and delete it before you've ended. Are y'all here? I'm, 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 I got to move on. It gives you the authority to speak to a dead thing. So what did I do? After I heard that message from my pastor, hey, he's my pastor. Can I get paid? My pastor. You're supposed to have an attitude about your pastor. He's my pastor. When he spoke that word, my whole perception of myself changed. It literally moved me from darkness to light in one message. That's why you can't miss church. Because that might be your traveling assignment in that one message. God told Ezekiel, Ezekiel, in Ezekiel chapter 37, he said, Ezekiel, do you see that valley of dry bones? He said, I need you to tell the bones to live. I told the first church, I told him, the first service, I said, I thank you, Ezekiel, for being human. You want me to do what? You want me to say what to whom? Amen. He asked him again. I need you to speak to these dry bones and tell them that I will bring breath back to them. I'll put breath in their bones. So what did he do in verse 7? In Ezekiel chapter 37, I'm not going to turn there. What did he do? He moved from darkness to life. And he was able to say, bones live. How did Ezekiel do it? We already have an example of Jesus. No, no, no. God says, no, I need another example. So here is Ezekiel. He said, Bones, I'm going to prophesy to you that you're going to live. How do you do it? You change your location. You change where you rule. You change. Well, Pastor Nero, this is just the way I am. Stay where you at. I'm moving on. That was not spiritual. I almost kind of like the same came from the darkness, don't it? <laughs> Amen. Well, here's the deal. You got to get tired. When you get tired, you're going to change. Amen. Number one, it gives you the authority to rebuke the enemy, your kingdom language. Amen. Number two, it gives you the authority to speak a life uh, to a dead thing and it shall live. Amen. And here's the third one. Are y'all ready? It gives you the authority to speak to yourself. Acts chapter 26. I love this. Oh, I love this. I love this. Acts chapter 26. I'm going to be done. I'm going to be done, y'all. I'm going to be done. Glory to God. I'm going to be done. This is the second service. I can make it. I can make it. Amen. Acts chapter 26. This is the story of our brother Paul. Oh, I thank you. Thank you so much, Paul. And Paul, he has been arrested by King Agrippa. And the Bible says, the Bible says in verse 1, then Agrippa, after he had arrested him, he's going to give him a chance to speak. Then Agrippa says unto Paul, you are permitted to speak for yourself. So what did Paul do? He stretched forth his hand. Let me just stop that stretch forth his hand. I didn't hit it this morning. I'm going to hit it right now. Stretch forth his hand implies worship. Um, it implies a surrender to Almighty God. I don't care how much you say you love the Lord. I ain't seen you lift your hands. I haven't seen you worship. Amen. So he lifts his hands, which implies worship. Now he can speak. But watch what he does. In verse 26, he says, he says, uh, I'm sorry, in chapter 26, verse, verse 1, I'm still there. Then Paul stretched forth his hands in worship and answered for himself. Are y'all ready? He said, I think myself happy. I said, Lord, now why you want me to read that scripture when I'm talking about speaking? God says you got to first think before you speak. So what did he do? Before he even says anything, he stressed forth his hands. So the Lord began to tell me then, this is what I need you to do. I need you to make sure that before you speak, that you spend time with me. Paul said, I think myself happy. So then God moves me over to Romans chapter 12. When I get to Romans chapter 12, saints of the most high God, then the Lord tells me, I need you to first be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. 
mind so that when you speak, it will manifest. He says, conform, change your mind. Pastor, why are you shouting at us? Because I believe this. We say some of every kind of thing. Don't we even play like you don't. Amen, church. Yes, you do. Yeah, yeah, you do. You keep all the shot down, and then you cuss the next day. Same person. Same mouth. Same kingdoms. One or other. Amen. Paul says, I need you to change your mind. And then the Lord gave me one more, and I'm going to be done, I'm going to be done. Then he gives me one more. He says, I need you to change your mind, because when you change your mind, you'll begin to talk different. Why is it that Pastor Nero come to church happy all the time? Because I spent time in the right kingdom. If you walk in, your stomach hurt, but you're limping. That's a cognitive dissonance. And you're limping, but your stomach hurt. Confusion everywhere. God says, change your mind. If you change your mind, you will never think that you're alone. Why not? Because you spent time in his presence. And when you're in his presence, he always directs you to Joshua chapter 1 that says, I'll never leave you nor forsake you because I'm in the right kingdom. Because I spent time, do y'all get that? I want to make sure you get that. Let me stay here for two minutes. He says here, he says, if you spend time in my presence, I'll always bring my presence to you to recite the word that you need in your spirit when you're in your trial. So you have to spend time in his presence. Amen. So that the word you need will bubble up. And you ain't read that scripture in years. And here it comes. Because you've been in his presence. And you find yourself all by yourself. God says, you might be by yourself, but you're not alone. That's another word. That's a whole other sermon. Amen? And then he says, I'll keep you in perfect peace in Isaiah chapter 26. If you keep your what? Stayed on me. You don't have to worry. You don't have to be fearful. And you don't have to doubt. God says, I'll move on your behalf because you're in my presence. I'll move for you. Sunday. My time is up, and I thank you for your God bless you.